Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy is Promo, and today we'll be covering the full complete guide of the Samsung One UI 2.0 update that also brought you Android 10. So recently there's been quite a few more phones that's been added to this update and I wanted to make a full guide of everything that is brand new and also what to expect if for some reason you don't have the update just yet. So one of the first things that you might notice other than the navigation of Android 10 will be inside of your camera. Now some of the icons have updated, they've changed, they've moved around and also all the different shooting modes are set up just a little bit different. So if yours is now looking like this, all you'd have to do is simply just swipe your finger along the bottom, switch your different shooting modes, and you also have a more tab. Now the more tab is really just set up for those shooting modes that you don't use that often. You can still always use it. You just simply tap on the shooting mode. It puts you inside of there. Now, if you do want to add in or change any of the shooting modes on the bottom, simply head over into more hit on that little edit icon. And let's say that you don't need night mode and you wanna bring it up here, but you do wanna add in hyperlapse. Now you just simply drag and drop it on the bottom. And if you do need to change the order, maybe you might use this a little bit more and you want it right next to the photo icon, uh, then you can do that. But I'm gonna place mine just right over here. You hit on save and that's really pretty much about it. Now on the very top of the phone, looking at some of the different icons, this is still gonna be your settings. This is your flash. This is your timer. This is changing your ratio aspect of the, of the photo. This is your motion photo. And then this is all the different uh, filters and beauty and everything else uh, that, you can, that you can take pictures of. And the cool thing is that all of these are live. So when I lift this up, you can actually see what it'll look like live on the bottom. Uh, I remember a long time ago, a couple of years ago, you would go into a different filter, but you didn't really know what it looked like. You're just taking a picture and then it shows it afterwards. So it's really nice that it's still a live shot and a live look of what it all looks like. Now this icon right here is going to be your scene optimizer. You can have it on or you can have it off. Scene optimizer just pretty much helps you take a better image. If you're outside, it'll go into outside mode. If you're indoors, it'll put it to indoor mode. If you're taking a picture of candles, it'll also go into a different shooting mode for that. The second feature that we'll cover is going to be the brand new screen recorder. Now, if you don't see it in your first page, that's just because I edited mine to kind of put everything in order of, you know, how often I use them. And if you don't see them in either of these two areas, just head over into your more options and go to button order. And then just look on the very top to see if it's sitting there. So this way you can just do a drag and drop and move it down. You can also change the different orders. So I put my screen recorder right there because I know exactly where it is because I do use the screen recorder quite a bit. Now, before I show you exactly how this brand new screen recorder works, if you press and hold on the icon, it's gonna take you into the settings of the screen recorder. So with this one, I have mine usually set up for media sounds. And then you can have your video quality to be 1080p, 720 or 480. Now this right here is just changing how large you would like to have your little selfie video size. So if you are maybe doing YouTube or maybe you wanted to share something on Facebook, you'd be able to have your image go a little bit larger. Now that we have everything set up, you just tap on the screen recorder icon and then hit on start recording. Now the cool thing about this one is not only is it inside of your quick settings, but you also have this little toolbar up here that you can move and change anywhere you want. You can tap on that little arrow to show you how much time you've recorded. And if you bring it right on back, then you're gonna see your two different tools. The first one is a way that you're able to draw on the screen live if you need to show somebody how to do something. And the next one is gonna be your little person icon, which is your selfie video. Now, as I move this around, it is recording the screen. So it's also moving around that, that video uh, that people are able to watch. Now, let's say that you needed to show somebody what to do in the settings. So let's say we go inside of the settings and then we're gonna tap on this little uh, marker button. We're gonna go, you know what, let's go with yellow. And I'm gonna say, yo, you gotta go right there. Then once you actually tap uh, on that little connections area, then you're gonna say, now you need to head over into uh, your mobile hotspot and tethering. So now that you've mentioned that, you go inside here and then you just keep on going with your video. When it's all done and complete, you hit on that little stop. Uh, it is gonna let you know that the video is saved and it's just underneath the screen recording album inside of your gallery. Now let's say that we just wanted to check this out just so I can kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, because it didn't pick up my voice, I didn't use the mic, it's picking everything up from the media. So if I was playing a game, if I was watching YouTube, if I was listening to music, all of that would be happening right now. You would actually be able to hear it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this a little bit forward. You can see that with me moving that video from before, uh, you know, it's doing all of that. Let's watch a little bit of me drawing. So I was mentioning that, you know, 
you're able to hit on that little marker icon. It doesn't show it. It's just gonna show what you drew. It goes away and then you just, that's it. I mean, you're giving a small little tutorial of what you need to do for somebody else through the screen recording option. And it's amazing, especially for a YouTuber who maybe wants to get into phone gaming and upload it. You can do everything from your cell phone. Third feature that we'll cover today is going to be dealing with the update to wireless PowerShare. Now, the thing that was a little annoying at the very beginning is that when you went into wireless PowerShare from before, you had a limit of how far down you're able to go, you know, with charging other people's devices. And originally it was 30%, but some people might be thinking, well, if I am charging somebody else a cell phone or somebody else's headset or watch you know i don't want to get myself all the way down to 30 so you can actually change the number of your battery limit so that means that if your phone gets to 50 percent or below it will not use this just to make sure that you have your own you know battery now i'm not able to turn it on because i am less than 50 percent so as example let's say that we move this on down let's go with the original default 30 percent so now if i wanted to charge somebody else's phone or watch i am able to do it all the way until my phone goes down to 30 percent which is still going to get me quite a few hours but something that is safe enough to make sure that you know i get home and get this thing charged so this is brand new it's a way that you're able to change the battery limit and beforehand you are not able to do that feature number four is pretty small but it's one of those things that is really nice and it's a little bit more helpful and that is by going through your folder in changing the color and it has a different type of color spectrum so before you would have to kind of move a little uh, circle trying to go around and find that exact color well this one actually puts it into a square grid you see all these awesome cool colors that you're able to use and as you go through it then you also have this line that you're able to change the color and how it looks and then when you hit on done uh, you just hit on X and then now you just change the color of your folder. Feature number five is dealing with the brand new Android 10 navigation. Now, I think a lot of videos usually starts off with this one because it is a pretty big deal navigating around the cell phone, but I wanted to put it kind of at fifth place, even though there is 15 new or updated features that I'm, I am covering in this video. So as you go inside of your display settings, you're gonna scroll down to your navigation bar. Now inside of here, you have your normal navigation buttons if you want to still use what you're used to but i'd have to say the moment you go into full screen gestures it is so much easier because you don't have to go to one location to hit back or one location to get into recent applications um, or one location to get back into the home now the thing that's amazing is i can go to the very top and i can swipe either you know that way or i can even swipe over here to go back so as long as you swipe into the screen that is how you go back and you can do it anywhere on the edge of the phone not at not just in the one location so that's me kind of harping that full screen gestures is amazing head over into more options and this is where you do want to turn this one on allow the back gesture on keyboard because it might be thinking that you're just doing swipe when you're actually just really trying to go back uh, and then i have my back gesture sensitivity right around there uh, and, and all of these settings right here work perfect for me uh, and then you also have these down here if you would like to use these i do have the gesture hints turned on and the show button to hide keyboard so to show you kind of what you know the home button does if i just swipe up anywhere from the bottom uh that's gonna take you back into the home and then also you might want to see what the recent apps looks like so you just swipe up and hold and then here is your recent applications and you'd be able to go inside and if you don't want to use any of those just swipe onto the screen to go back the next feature that we'll talk about is still kind of along the lines of the navigation that is brand new so let's say that we're now in twitter and then we head over into the gallery now inside of here let's say that you wanted to go back to the most recent application that you just got done using now instead of swiping up and holding and then heading inside of your recent applications if you just swipe along the bottom it will bring you your very last application and if you swipe one more time it takes you back to that other application that you were just in so it's a way that you're able to flip between two different applications really quick just by swiping along the bottom feature number seven is dealing with the dynamic lock screen so this is actually a really cool new feature that you're able to get into and if you press and hold on your screen just any home screen press and hold where there's no icon tap on wallpapers and then inside of here go to wallpaper services this is where you can go to dynamic lock screen now the cool thing with this one is that it brings up a different uh, lock screen wallpaper every time you turn on your phone or you lock it and unlock it and you can select different categories of what you want to kind of pop up so let's say that we wanted to go right now it's actually in let's go to pets so once you select pets 
then once you lock your phone, you get out of it, uh, it's going to change the image every single time. So here's a dog and a cat. Let's say that we switch it one more time. Here's another cat. Uh, let's say that we switch it again. Here's a dog. And so it just keeps on going and going and going. Uh, and then the other cool thing that you're able to do is you can actually swipe pretty slow. So if you swiped from the edge and you came in pretty slow, you're able to go through all the images uh, and just to kind of check them out. If there's one that you love, you'd also be able to maybe take a screenshot of it and then you can save it as its own wallpaper specifically. Uh, on the top right hand side, you can select a different category and you can also hide this image. So if you're not a huge cat lover, you'd be able to hide this image so this one does not pop up again. Feature number eight that we'll cover is this is for anybody who uses the Samsung internet. So Samsung internet, this right over here, which is inside the Samsung folder, just titled internet. This one is one that is made by Samsung. Uh, and what you're able to do is on the very bottom, you'd be able to hit on all of your tabs. So on the top right hand side, this is where you can change to the card view. So this is maybe something that you might be used to, but on the very top right hand side, you can go to the list form. Now let's say that you also maybe got rid of that tab, but that was you know taken away accidentally. You're like, oh shoot, I need to bring that back. Well on the top right hand side, go to reopened closed tab and it's still there to use. Feature number nine is dealing with all of the updates with the face unlock. So when you go inside of your settings, go down over into biometrics and security, then head over into face recognition, type in your code. Once you're in, you're gonna see a couple different new features that is right over here. So the first one is gonna be alternative look. So this is where, let's say you have two completely different looks for me, with me being a guy, really the only alternative look I have is if I'm wearing sunglasses and a hat. So my first face unlock recognition is just me, my regular self, no hat, no glasses. And then I also set up a alternative look. So if I am wearing maybe a forward facing hat and sunglasses, I can have that one saved as well. And it unlocks with either look. Now, the other couple things that is brand new is going to be this one right here, which is require open eyes. So originally this was one of those things that was kind of in the news a while ago is that you'd be able to sleep. Uh, and someone was able to just place it over your, your face and it still unlocks. This is a way that uh, once you set up your facial recognition, make sure your eyes are open, obviously, and you're not smiling, uh, you'd be able to select this option here. So if you are sleeping, it will not unlock unless if your eyes are open. So those are just two new features that is inside of the facial recognition. Feature number 10 is dealing with the brand new edge lighting screen. So first you are able to hit that search button. If you wanna search for any of these features, just type in edge lighting, or you go right over here for your quick settings, press and hold on that icon. It takes you to the full settings screen right here, and then you can go through your different lighting uh, styles. So right over here, you can see that it is set up a little bit different from before. Uh, there's a few different ones down here that is brand Brand new. I have to say my favorite one is fireworks. So this is the one that I automatically already have it set up to. Uh, you can also see the eclipse. Here is echo. So it kind of shows it, you know, on the sides and you also have spotlight. So you can kind of go through, find which one you love the most. And I'm going to go with fireworks. Uh, here is color. This is where you have all the different colors right here. You can set it up to where it's through the app color. So, you know, with Twitter uh, and Facebook kind of being similar color blues, you know, I actually just went through and when you hit on this little area here, you can switch which color you want it to be and you can see exactly what it looks like instantly. So as I said from before, with the whole folder, you know, color changing schemes here, uh, it's really nice that it has it all set up with a, uh, a square grid. So I believe blue is the one that I love the most. So I'm gonna hit on done. And then once that's all finished, you head over into advanced. Now over here, do not put your transparency high because you're not gonna see it as well. You wanna make sure it's on low. Uh, and then also too, if you put it very narrow, you might not see it. Some cases can also cover it. So you're gonna wanna make sure you put it on wide. And then the duration uh, just kind of depends on, you know, if you want it to be shorter uh, or short, you know, kind of in the middle, or you can make it extremely long and then you just hit on done. Then you just go through everything set up the exact same. You choose which applications you want it to work with and then when you want it to show. When the screen is on, when the screen is off, or always. Feature number 11 is dealing with the brand new Smart Crop that is inside of the Smart Select. So Smart Select is something that I use quite often on my cell phone. Uh, so let's say that we're in this screen here. Uh, there's an image right here in the middle that kind of stands out and maybe this is what you want to show and share. So once you open up your little edge panel, you're gonna head over into where your smart select panel is, click on your rectangle, and instead of it just randomly picking a random square, it actually highlights the exact image that you would probably most likely to share. 
So as example, let's say that we scroll on up a little bit. We're gonna go right here. This large image right there is not really in, in sight. And this is usually, uh, actually I picked it up right there too. I was trying to, I was actually trying to uh, confuse it. So let's bring it up a little bit more. Let's hit on this. This is actually what would happen in any other screen uh, is going through there and just putting a random rectangle right in the center. Uh, but the cool thing about it is that because of smart cropping, uh, let's say that we put this right there, we hit on that rectangle again, it picks up that exact image. It's just super cool, super smart. Even when a couple minutes ago, I was actually trying to uh, trick it a little bit, but it still found that image perfectly. Feature number 12 is actually inside of developer options. You can see that some of these icons right here are kind of teardrop shape. Uh, so these three are teardrop. This one is not. This is what the normal applications look like. And this is what it looks like when you have teardrop. Now, I don't know exactly why some icons will work and other icons will not, but I will have to say that when you go inside of some games and you swipe through, it actually looks really cool when they're a little bit larger. Now, there's a few of them that don't go into it, but this is something that is new and you know they're probably still working it out so you want to go down to your developer options make sure you have it unlocked go to the extreme bottom and then this is where you can see your theming so you can change your accent color the headline body font uh, but here's your icon shape so there's a bunch of different ones you can have default you can have square you can have squircle <laughs> it's like square circle uh, and then the rounded rectangle so i went to teardrop and then once you select it you just restart your phone once it turns right back on then you're going to have your teardrop icons feature number 13 is actually pretty cool it's one that is called focus mode it's a brand new setting a brand new feature when you press and hold on focus mode uh, this is where it's going to show you it, it's set up you know inside of digital well-being but it shows you, you know how many times you use your phone how many times you unlock it which application you use the most your app timers wind down but this is what we're going to talk about here which is focus mode so you can create different modes for what you're doing so if you're at work you can put it on this work time and it's going to basically gray out all the other applications so you're not watching like let's say YouTube uh, and if you want to go into me time inside of here this just means I don't want to do anything but just enjoy me you know maybe I want to play a game listen to music watch YouTube uh, anything like that everything else is grayed out phone down this just really means yo man this is where i'm gonna put my phone down i'm not gonna be distracted with anything else i want to listen to music take notes take any photos call people use hangouts and messages that's really it and then once you hit on start all the other applications will be grayed out you're not able to use it uh, and you only have six apps that are available so once I head on home, you can see that everything is pretty much grayed out. There's really nothing I can really use. Uh, I got my Hangouts that I can use. Uh, I got my you know Samsung Notes that I'm able to use, and really oh my messages and phone, and that's really kind of about it. Anytime I try to go into, you know, uh, that maybe like that folder. Let's say I try to go to Instagram, it's saying that it's 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 changed or it's locked. Uh, now inside of here, I can change uh, or at least see which applications are available, and I can also end it. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's, it's a way that you're able to get away from, you know, using your phone so much, just kind of focus on, you know, family time or, or work time or really whatever you're doing. Now, this next one is dealing with live transcribe. So this will definitely help anybody that has maybe a hard time of hearing or, you know, maybe you are in a lecture and you would like to have whatever they're stating go into your phone. So you want to pull down the notifications panel, hit on settings, scroll all the way down to your accessibility and then hearing enhancements. Now inside of the hearing enhancements, you will be uh, going to the very bottom, which is right here. It's only one little screen, but there's live transcribe. Uh, once you turn this one on, uh, if you are using the normal navigation icons, you'll see a little person icon, but because mine are dealing with gestures, uh, this is just letting you know how you can you know, open it up, how you can turn it off. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swipe up and it's going to go inside of live transcribe. Now, what's inside of here, it's using a very sensitive mic to really pick everything up. Now, even if I get out and I come back in, it's time stamping everything. So I can actually scroll through everything that is happening. You can go through your settings on the bottom. You can change your text size. You can also save the transcription and it's only being saved for three days. You can go inside of more options or more settings uh, and you can kind of change a few things. If you have a different microphone, you know, maybe a different headset or a watch, then you can maybe place that next to the speaker and then you can sit at your desk. And I mean, it, it's pretty cool. So 
you can see here it already time stamped it still kind of i mean it's still the exact same time it's still 1209 but it, it put a little line there because i left and then i came back and then how you're able to get out of this one is that you just want to swipe up with two fingers and hold and then it's able to get out of uh, the live transcribe now this very last one is one that you already kind of saw, but we didn't really go over, you know, what is kind of new. You know, we went over that whole dynamic lock screen, but the whole screen, the whole setup process, this is all new. Beforehand, it didn't show both of them at the same time. It didn't show you, you know, how they're both set up. So it's actually pretty cool. You can also explore more wallpapers right here. You can check out my wallpapers that is sitting right there. This is where it'll show you all of the brand new wallpapers that comes new with updates and also cell phones. So all of these right here are going to be brand new, at least with the Galaxy Note 10 uh, with the Android 10 update. And so up here, you can also check out some more stuff. Uh, this is Galaxy Picks. This one is just a random theme picker. It has a whole bunch of different things there. I'm gonna hit on download. So maybe this time I'd be able to use that one. Uh, but if I don't wanna use this one right over here, let's say we wanna go with one that is brand new. I'm gonna set this one up for the lock screen. Uh, and we are now done and finished. So this was pretty much the full entire guide. This is every single thing that is brand new, especially the ones that is worth noting uh, for the brand new Samsung One UI 2.0 update that brought you Android 10. But I hope you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hit on subscribe. Subscribe right over here in the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.